Thank you, everyone. I'd like to start also by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land and sea country on which we live, work and play. And for me, it's the Wargra Kaaba people in, uh, in Townsville. And I thought I'd like to go one step further and just share some of their language, because I think it's very respectful to not only acknowledge, but to act. And the Wargra Kaaba word for the Great Barrier Reef is Mugar. The Wargra Kaaba word for coral is Dambi. And the Wargra Kaaba word for fish is Dia. So I thought I'd just share that with you to try and inspire you to also find out some of the language of the traditional owner groups in your land and sea country. Um, the talk I'm going to give today is going to talk about people. People, citizens, they're the most important thing of all. And I was very privileged to go on a 14-day expedition. I'm going to share the quite ambitious aims of that expedition, the methods, some very preliminary results, because the expedition only finished a couple of weeks ago. I'm going to try and link it to the key themes for this conference to inspire, impact and influence in my summary. Like everyone, I'm going to try and inspire you into action and we'll talk about what to do next. So it all started with an idea about two years ago and another group that we admire and we work with is Great Barrier Reef Legacy based out of Port Douglas and they ran the first citizen science expedition of the Great Barrier Reef. And it went pretty well, but it didn't go great. And I was asked to put together a team for the 2023 expedition. And I talked to GBR Legacy, what worked, what didn't. And one of the key things that I heard was, you need a diversity of people. They also have to be great communicators and they have to care about people. Now, one of the things you might have think is missing is what about the science? Okay. So what you've got here is six people and three of my co-authors are in this room. The fabulous Tony, citizen science archaeologist, the amazing Joe, citizen science artist, and the rest of the diverse group. I've got a writer, I've got scientists, um, I've got people who are experts in genetics. Some men, some women, again, what's missing? I would have loved to have a traditional owner, and I did have one early, but unfortunately couldn't get her over the line as part of the team. We planned this for about two years, and then we were very excited to get to Cairns and start meeting some of our partners. So you've already heard from Andy Wigley, and he's doing some amazing work with citizens of the GBR. So this is us in our khaki. We wore this uniform almost non-stop for two weeks. We're pretty recognisable. Um, but we said goodbye to our friends in Cairns and the adventure began. And it wasn't just us and them. This was a team. This was the staff of Coral Expeditions, the guest lecturers, and 40 amazing guests, one of which is at the back of the room. Hi, Marilyn. <laughs> um, the ages were from 11 to 88. And originally I was a little bit worried because we were told, look, a lot of them might not get in the water. Wrong. They were keen. They got in the water. They had a go at everything. Um, this is the equipment that we used. And this is a pretty high-end citizen science trip. The big vessel, the Coral Discoverer, yep, it's luxury. One of Australia's leading ecotourism operators. They cut their teeth on trips in the Kimberleys. They also work in the GBR, do around Tasmania, and also internationally. But citizen science is fairly new for them. Yes, they often have guest lecturers to entertain and share knowledge, but not the deep dive into citizen science that we were doing as part of this trip. We had the Explorer, which is a great boat, take up to 50 people, lower the platform, get you onto islands, reefs, and we also had the Expedition Zodiacs. And this is the three units in play. Offshore the boat, the Explorer up close to a reef, and the Zodiac sort of hovering around for safety. Obviously safety, risk assessment, toolbox talks, we did lots of those as well. And here's the ambitious aims of the expedition. Did I tell you this was two years in the planning? You know, we pitched the idea, we'd love to do it, and eventually they came back to us and said, give us more information. So we wanted to do something, hopefully I think you'll find the 
that's a little bit unique. We wanted it for passengers and staff to learn about citizen science, about the species management and science. We wanted them to be actively involved, not just observers, but equal participants. We wanted genuine scientific outcomes, and that's C word, communication. We recognised we were a small ship of about 60 people. We wanted to reach thousands, hundreds of thousands, potentially millions of people, and inspire others to have an impact and influence. And also, a couple of people have talked about it, but we recognise the biggest issue facing the planet is climate change. We wanted to have a discussion about facilitating and fundraising a carbon neutral expedition. And one of the things that I would hope all of you would also be thinking is how can you make all of your citizen science activities carbon neutral? This is where we went. It was a 14 day cruise. The trip changed, true expedition style. When we got on board, there was a cyclone, an early cyclone brewing offshore. There were a few ship issues, but we left Cairns and we headed north. And basically we followed the Great Barrier Reef. We spent a few days at Lizard Island. Then we came back down the reef. Um, we stopped off around Yamakata Reef. Um, we went to the Orpheus Island Research Station, went to the amazing John Brewer Reef, which hosts the Museum of Underwater Art, out to Myrmidon. And then we went out to the Wild Blue, out into the Coral Sea an area where very few people had the opportunity to go. And I think that blew everyone's mind. And one of the designs that we were very keen to do is to have a comparison between the citizen science in the Great Barrier Reef and the citizen science in the Coral Sea. And just as a bit of an aside, when I was doing my introductory talk to the guests, I said, there's about 100,000 eye naturalist observations in the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park. How many do you think there are in the Coral Sea Marine Park? less than a thousand. So the opportunity for discovery was huge. Now, most people talk about one method. You know, Andy talks about census, others talk about Coral Watch, we talk about iNaturalist. We had 14 days and we wanted to give people a rich experience and try them with some of the easy ones, but also to push them a little bit, not only the guests, but also ourselves. So this is the raft of tools that we had on board. And you can see some of them, such as eDNA, are pretty sophisticated. RedMap, of course, is one of the tools that is used to map the range extension of species associated with climate change. And then we looked at a number of habitat ones, um, including eye on the reef. We collected some marine debris. We did some heritage surveys with our underwater archaeologists. And most importantly, we also did some social surveys in partnership with CSIRO just to check how we were going with the guests, whether we were meeting their expectations, what they thought about the reef and so forth. Uh, this is what it looked like in some of the areas. It wasn't all like this, but it was pretty bloody good. Um, high coral cover, lots of diversity of fish. Sometimes you didn't know where to look. People took a lot of photos, collected a lot of data, were really inspired about how healthy it looked, both in the Great Barrier Reef and the Coral Sea. And if you haven't been out to the Coral Sea, this is a drone photograph of Peril Cay. We land on the beach, you can have a walk, you can count turtle tracks, look at various species of birds, crabs, and then snorkel in the water and be surrounded by fish and clams and invertebrates and all sorts of things. So put it on your bucket list. Uh, we saw a fair bit of natural activities, including fish and turtles and birds, both feeding and making the next generation. And this got some people really excited, particularly people from James Cook Uni who wanted to do further research on turtles in this area. And of course, we had an artist on board. Now, this is old school, you know, people like Matthew Flinders, um, James Cook, Banks, they had artists on board as well. And we found this a really rich way of engaging with people to draw what they saw. Because not everyone has a GoPro or an underwater camera, but everyone can draw something. And sometimes we had drawing CSI. What did you see? And they described it to you. Oh, I don't really think there are 1,650 species on the reef. Maybe you can draw it and colour it. Maybe that will narrow it down. So this was a fantastic tool that got quite a lot of people involved, and particularly 
older people who weren't perhaps as mobile and didn't want to get in the water three or four or five times a day, such as some of us younger ones did. Um, we also did some social surveys and asked a couple of questions. Uh, the survey, interestingly, only took about five minutes, but this was the response to the question, what activity did you participate in today? And I think it gives you a bit of a flavour as to just how popular things like iNaturalist were. Uh, sorry, snorkeling. I'll get, I'll get to iNaturalist next. Everyone went snorkeling. A lot of them walked on islands. Um, they heard a lot from the expert guest lecturers. I think we delivered 15 lectures, formal ones, during the expedition. And there was a lot of other engagement and talking. Here's the interesting bit in terms of the citizen science. I think we had about 75 to 80% involvement of everyone in citizen science. iNaturalist was by far and away the most popular, followed by Coral Watch and the citizens of the GBR census. But everyone had a bit of a go at everything, um, at either individuals or small teams. And this is a survey sample size of about 100. Um, this blew my mind. You know, a lot of the iNaturalist projects I've been involved with, and Rochelle's talked about some of them, you know, John Brewer Reef, Orpheus Island, they're several years old and we've reached two to 3,000 observations over multiple years. This group of exceptional people from ages 11 to 88 made over 4,300 observations in 14 days and they're still entering data. And they recorded over 619 species. Um, that's 39 observers. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. But I also wanted to point out that it's not just the people on board. We also really, really appreciated the identifiers. There's more of them than the observers. These are people from throughout the world who are experts in their field, who work for the Australian Museum, who work for Coral Watch, who helped people turn a raving fish or a stony coral into a family or a genus or a species. And they followed our journey and we felt like they were there with us the whole time as well. So that was awesome. Um, in terms of impact, everyone takes something different out of the expedition. But for me, um, numbers do help, particularly when you can communicate to managers. Over 100 new species records from the Coal Sea Marine Park. 100. Surprisingly, 67 species added to the existing citizen science database for the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park. And we saw crown of thorns starfish in the Coral Sea, that's pretty cool, as well as some things I'd never even heard of, never even seen, and I'm someone that's done 4,000 dives and generally live in the water. I had to have a swim before I came here just to wet my gills. So things like the barred angelfish, angel the singular butterfly fish, the curious wormfish, who's ever heard of them? You know, as I said, there's 1,650 species of fish. Interestingly, fish were by far and away the most popular thing to photograph. Um, here's another example. People were doing a real bioflex. This was a shell never before photographed in Australia. Research grade observation. Uh, Coral Watch was great. This took people to the next level. It's a bit like scouts. Start with iNaturalist, move to Coral Watch and then keep getting the badges. And we made over 300 observations, including to some sites where Coral Watch had never been done before. Eye on the Reef, which is the big program of the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park Authority. We did it in the reef, but not in the Coral Sea Marine Park. Why not? Because there's a legislative boundary. But we had a go, and we're going to analyze the data and compare and contrast. And of course, eDNA. We got people collecting water, filtering water. Those results will be sent to a lab and will open up a whole new way of comparison between citizen science and what's observed, particularly the microscopic stuff. So that's going to be really cool. We were working with Jolly D. Batista from Griffith University. I'm down to less than two minutes, but um, this exciting opportunity to go to Myrmidon Reef and dive with a permit the historic shipwreck of a phone, got some people so excited they couldn't talk. Um, and we also discovered a previously unknown anchor. 
So having 40 sets of eyes in the water was gold, and at the same time we collected biological and ecological observations. So I think we've changed Tony's life, and she's going to do a PhD on this, aren't you, Tony? Am I stuck? Can we move forward? I'm stuck. Yeah, I know, you've magic that. I've only got a couple more slides, but... Thank you. So this is close to my summary. And again, the conference has got an amazing theme. Inspire, impact and influence. And I tried to think about it. And I started off by saying people are the most important. And it was the people on this trip, the guests, the staff, their families. We had a master brief guide who said this blew her mind. The partners, the opportunity for us to inspire you at this conference. I reckon we've reached about 500 people so far. And remember, We've only disembarked two weeks ago. The impact, we gave about 15 lectures, 8,000 plus observations, 100 plus new species, helped out the people that managed the Coral Sea Marine Park particularly. We used a whole range of tools. I don't think anyone I know that's used that many in the marine environment before. Um, I'll show you a slide in a minute. Most people through the survey gave it a 10 out of 10. And the in-kind benefit, around $500,000. Um, influence, we often do that by communication, we've done media releases, written some articles, social media. I think we've reached around 500,000 people so far, so we're well on the way. And those partners have been fantastic. This project will continue as we write scientific papers and reports and try and pitch for running a repeat of this expedition in two or three years' time. And next slide, please. Click again. And one more time. This is just a quote, and I know a few other people have given them, of people who have participated. And this was a doctor who took his 11-year-old daughter who said the right things. Inspirational, kind, professional. So proud that you know they were there for a once-in-a-lifetime trip. Next slide. I'm so proud to be here with my talented team who have given several talks, particularly Rochelle and Julia. Yes, you are pillars of citizen science. Next click. Um, here was the overall satisfaction. If you don't do this with your programs, this is how you improve. We're not perfect, they're not all 10 out of 10, but I've been doing this for close to 60 years. That's about as good as I've ever achieved. So really proud for the team to do that. And next click. Final slide, what can you do? Try a few different tools, go out of your comfort zone. Do it in a carbon neutral way. Communicate, 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 and come and join us in 2025 where we together can have more conversations on citizen science and change the world. Thank you very much. Oh, that was wonderful and inspiring. We have a friend who does the other land-based talks on that vessel um, who comes to our bioblitz. Um, I wanted to know, how did you make it carbon neutral? It's a work in progress. But first of all, like a good scientist, you've got to measure it. So you've got to understand particularly, for example, how much fuel you're using and what type. So we've calculated that. And then you, the best way you can do this in our current climate is to offset it. So it's a work in progress, but we know how much fuel we know, we know our impact, um, and we've had a few discussions with the group, but work in progress. We do make a lot of other out activities carbon neutral, including our annual Orpheus Island um, masterclass. I have a related question from the perspective of iNaturalist and positional accuracy as you collect your data in a marine environment. Um, could you describe how you um, set that up, whether it was just a single location when you did your dives and then you do positional accuracy of 50 meters or something like that? Um, I'd be curious to know how you do that. Yeah, look, that's a really good question. And I think often if you're a beginner in iNaturalist, you search for a location and hit the default, and it's often quite a big area. 
as you get more experience, you try and narrow it down. Um, some people just put in a reef or an island. Um, again, there was no particular systematic way of doing it. But it's a learning platform. So if someone does put a really huge, huge area, you make a comment or you try and help them refine it and improve it, particularly so that it can fit into some other projects. Um, ballpark figure for the cost to come on the 2025 gig? For for you, probably around uh, ten to twelve thousand for fourteen days. Jeez, yeah. um, start collecting my sponsors now, I suppose. Well, look, what I'd like to think is if potentially you could get some co-funding and get some sort of grants or support, so that together, like Andy really said, we could have it subsidised, or it could be a reward, or it could be a way of teaching the next generation. These sort of things can happen. So I'd like to think together we can um, use the Brains Trust and make it happen again. 14 days. I'm hoping we'll do it again in 25 or 26. It takes a while to plan forward. Okay, thanks very much, everyone. Thanks.